All right, good morning everyone and welcome to the Search for Excellence celebration for our 2019 recipients. Um, we are getting started and what we'll be doing today is I'll give you a little background information on Search for Excellence, but then the really exciting part is we're going to hear from each of our teams that received, um, that were recognized for Search for Excellence this year. And they'll tell you about their project and, and have a, a minute or two if you want to ask them any questions. But just to start, Search for Excellence is a statewide recognition program of Master Gardener volunteer work across North Carolina. So our focus is to identify outstanding Master Gardener volunteer-led group projects. So we're not focusing on one individual. We're, we're looking at what Master Gardener volunteers are doing together as a group that result in si significant learning. So we know there's lots of great projects out there that serve important purposes, but what with Search for Excellence, we're really looking on at those educational outreach projects um, that result in learning. There are seven different categories for Search for Excellence, um, and we have these sev seven categories to align with the International Master Gardener Search for Excellence, um, which is um, offered every other year, and um, they are youth programs, demonstration garden, workshop or presentation, community service, innovative projects, research, and special needs audiences. So I encourage everyone who's here to think about the things that you're doing in your county and how they would fit one of these, um, these categories. If you have a project and you're not sure maybe how it would fit in or how you could submit it, you're welcome to contact me or one of our Search for Excellence working group members who I'll show you those names in just a minute and get some advice on maybe which would be the best category to select. Um, and we definitely encourage everybody who has either been selected for Search for Excellence in the past to, to also um, submit their project to International Master Gardener Search for Excellence, which are which the call for that will be going out sometime in the next three or four months, most likely, and those will be awarded at the International Master Gardener Conference, the next one, which will be in 2021 up in Virginia. So for our 2019 North Carolina Search for Excellence, we had 15 applications, which was wonderful. We really appreciate everyone who took the time to submit their projects. They were all amazing things that are going on in our counties across North Carolina and we certainly appreciate everything everyone's doing. Um, we did have entries in all categories except research, so this year we didn't have any research categories, and um, those would be, research would be projects you're doing, maybe you're doing some variety trials, or maybe you're testing out different pest control methods. This is where you're trying to investigate something, uh, like especially for local conditions, you're trying to generate the research-based information for your area, so um, that would be good if you, we typically don't have a lot of applications in research, so if you've got any of that type of work going on, I really encourage you to think about applying for 2020. Um, we, do we do select one recipient in each category, and there is a scoring matrix I'll show you on the next slide, and um, even if there's only one application in a category, if that project doesn't score 75 or higher, they don't receive it, so it's not that just because there may have been only one application that's automatic, you do have to, to score a minimum of 75. And our, our recipients receive $200 um, as the Search for Excellence Award, and that goes to the Master Gardener Program to use for their outreach and their education efforts. And those awards are funded by the North Carolina Extension Master Gardener Endowment um, from the interest income that comes from, from that. So all of your Donations that go to the endowment help support the statewide program and one of our uh, currently one of our main focuses or the main ways we help support the program statewide is through Search for Excellence and um, these awards that go to the counties. This is our judging criteria. So we're looking at um, six different areas. Uh, we, we're looking at simplicity, and again, these align with the International Master Gardener Search for Excellence judging criteria because we want to make it as easy as possible if you've um, submitted an application at the state level to go on and submit to international. So we're looking at, at for simplicity, we want ideas that can be replicated by other groups for relevance. We want, to, we want it to be the best way to reach the target audience. Um, it's great to see a little creativity in there. So even if you're taking an idea that already existed, how you make it unique and make it reflect your community and, and your program. 
um, higher scoring criteria or that the project is compatible with the Extension Master Gardener mission, so that it is focused on educational, research-based, it's non-discriminatory, it helps participants use knowledge to solve problems. Um, the application itself, that it's clear and um, everything's included, that, that is uh, uh, 20 points of the total score. And then we want to see evidence of learning. So learning took place either by Master Gardener volunteers who were involved or the public or both. So that's a really important part of the application. So as you're thinking about preparing those for next year or international, those are things to think about to make sure you include and can show in the application. So these are things that all of our projects for this year had. Um, these are our working group members, and I know some of them, if not all of them, are on the call with us today. Um, David Higginbotham is, was the chair for our 2019 Search for Excellence, and, I, and he's going to stay on in that capacity for 2020, which is really appreciated. We have Wanda Crutchfield in Durham County, Carolyn Flowers in Guilford County, and Mickey Levine in Chowan County. Um, if you guys are here and want to say hello, you're welcome to do that. But uh, certainly appreciate um, your work and support of Search for Excellence by being part of the working group. We're excited this year we've recruited more judges, so um, we've made a, an effort to um, have a wider judging panel that is from all parts of the state, so we'll actually have a, a larger pool of folks um, judging applications for 2020. All right, so we're going to jump now into our presentations and just want to congratulate all of our recipients this year um, and say how much we appreciate the work you're doing and um, going that extra step to actually submit the application because I know everyone out there is doing great things, but it takes an extra effort to put the application together and get it in. So congratulations to all our recipients. Um, and to all our people who did apply, we, we would do use that information, even if your project wasn't selected as a recipient, that information is used when we talk about the program um, and when we talk about what's going on in the reports that we prepare and share um, with the public and with our administration and with other stakeholders. So our order of presentations today, and um, we're going to start a little early so that gives us a little bit of wiggle room um, which is always nice but we're going to start off each of our groups has around 10 minutes and we'll start off with our Cabarrus County groups um, then go to Chatham, Caldwell, Wilson, Watauga and Buncombe and after we finish with Buncombe I will have just a few announcements at the end to tell you about 2020 Search for Excellence and how you can be part of that um, and we should wrap up by 1130. Okay so our first um, recipients that we're going to hear from our uh, special needs audience category um, are Master Gardener volunteers from Cabarrus County. They're going to tell us about the Stonewall Jackson Horticultural Project and um, Denise Christiana, I think I said that right, Denise will be narrating but she'll be um, representing the group and their project. So I'm going to turn it over to you Denise and I'll move forward to your first slide. And you're on mute, so I'll, I'll go ahead and unmute you. Okay. Okay. Good yeah. morning. Thank you for having us. We're very excited. Um, along with me, uh, Denise, today I have um, Renee Hendrick, Dorothy Anthony, and Marianne Scully sitting with me. Um, this is a group we've worked with the Stonewall Jackson Youth Developmental Center. Um, we started in February of 2017. And what you're looking at here is uh, basically how all of this came about. Um, this is an aquaponics um, with tilapia fish. And we were introduced to this by a gentleman by the name of Sam Fleming. And that is actually how this interest and this program was started in going to Stonewell Jackson and working with the youth. Um, so the tilapia are uh, in this bin. The students are actually um, taught how to record and measure the quality of the water. Um, you can go on to the next slide. Okay, so this is part of aquaponics is the idea is to go ahead and eliminate less land use. Uh, these are some of the ingredients. You can see lettuce that is growing. The water and the fertilizer from the fish is 
sent through a pipe system and that feeds the food. Um, I'd like people to note here that frequently what was grown here and in the greenhouse was transported up to the kitchen and used um, for the students. Um, so it was very exciting. It's kind of a very forward moving approach to gardening and it was a very good experience to turn the kids on to this. We can move on. Okay, so these are our beds. Um, and uh, we have numerous beds. I think we counted about 15 or 16 that are outside of the greenhouse. And the students go ahead and prepare the beds. We have compost, a uh, compost pile they learn about. We have donations that are made through the community for um, fertilizer soil. And basically the students do the work here and we work along with them and attempt to educate them about planting, composting. They actually built these beds, um, which is quite wonderful to watch them be a part of it from the very beginning. And I think you had mentioned, Denise, that um, we don't see a lot of pictures of the students in the slides because of the type of program they're participating in, but they were definitely hands-on involved. Exactly. It, it is a residential corrections facility, so the students cannot be photographed. Thank you for pointing that out. So here we have different things being planted. We have vegetables that are being planted and as the vegetables come up from harvesting, uh, we'll talk about what was planted. We also have uh, a batch of blueberry trees that were planted this year and grapes. Um, and that is gonna be one of our focuses next year. Uh, we have an individual on board, um, a New Mast Garden member who has an expertise in both blueberries and grapes. And that class is beginning to start as far as preparation, um, working with the grapevines and what will be done with that. So here you can see our harvest. It's very exciting. Um, we have uh, tomatoes, okra, squash, um, kale, kale collards, collards, green, green beans, beans, carrots. carrots. We, you name it, we have quite a bit. Okay, here we have, uh, is that Swiss chard? Yes. yes, we have Swiss chard here. And what I'd like to point out to people, um, you know, in addressing what has been the biggest attribute of the program for the students, um, and something to bear in mind as you're looking at all these slides, we really have come away realizing that we're giving the students very um, life applicable skills and that they are learning to follow through on a project, uh, which is prepping soil, creating the environment, planting the seed, caring for the plants, watering, nurturing, fertilizing, and then harvesting with um, a product. Um, that in and of itself is a valuable skill that they can walk away with and use throughout their life and that it's teaching patience, it's teaching consistency and the satisfaction and joy that comes from actually experiencing you know, something from the beginning to the end. So that is definitely you know, how we would sum up was the greatest gift that we were given and able to give the students. Not to mention the satisfaction that we received from that also. Go ahead. This is one of our master gardeners, Marianne Scully, <laughs> in her boots. I borrowed them from the kids. Did you? Yes. Oh, she borrowed those boots from the kids. We didn't know that. <laughs> um, these are some trellises. They were donated by the community. And I'm so proud and happy to say that it was actually the students working with some of the other uh, counselors and whatnot and the head of the program to build and construct trellises. So it overall, it's a complete learning experience in and of itself involving many skills. 
it looks like there's a uh, chicken wire on those yes on those, yeah yeah the, what they grow like um cucumbers and stuff on uh green beans you'll see oh. go ahead to the next slide oh, yeah. oh beautiful yes yes and those green beans were used in a few cooking demonstrations um it's it's been surprisingly um exciting and pleasant for us to experience the kids reaction the young the young men's reaction when they actually see the fruits of their efforts um we have a story where uh one student chose uh, picked out harvested a carrot from the ground and and actually didn't know what it was and that is the result of you know buying canned food and vegetables so again it's a learning skill that will follow them hopefully throughout the rest of their lives next slide so here's some of our produce our harvest you can see the green beans peppers okra um, a lot of students, including us, uh, some of us, had never eaten okra. I had never seen okra grown the way it's grown. It was very surprising to me. Cucumbers, purple beans, tomatoes, all from, all from the harvest, all from what the kids had worked on. Butternut squash, green tomatoes. Now on this, uh, the fried, the green tomatoes, we had a lesson and we felt it was very important to follow through on this completion. And one of our uh, participants, Renee, is an excellent cook. And we actually created, we brought in a wok and whatever supplies we needed and made fried green tomatoes for the kids. Um, and you'll, there were numerous well, things that we prepared. And that was our approach to um, just showing the students, you know, how good the food is that they grow themselves. And the difference between perhaps a store-bought tomato and what they're growing there at Jackson. Here's something that we made in the wok. It looks like there was squash in there, probably spinach, kale, tomatoes, tomatoes carrots, carrots, onions. Yeah. And the students loved the food. They, we could have, uh, they could have eaten all day. It was hot great. Sauce. Yeah, hot sauce. They always enjoyed their hot sauce on the food. But to get a homegrown meal, in a facility such as this was a big treat. Um, it's definitely a plus for these students and they enjoyed it, as did we in, in the preparation of it. So this is a wisteria tree and it's a vine and it has been there uh, for quite a while. Um, by the way, the Jackson facility was created in uh, 1909. So it's been around for a very long time. It's gone through various changes. Um, it, this goes to show the beauty of what we have there and what the students have created. Uh, it's very enjoyable and very healthy for the students to get out of their facilities and into the program. We average anywhere from four to nine students at a time. And we are there uh, once a week. Right now, there's currently six of us involved in the program. And we spend about three hours there with the students. Do we That's have any, excellent. Yeah. Is there any questions or? Yeah, we have time for a question or two. If anybody out there, if you put something in the chat box, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Or if you want to unmute your mic and ask a question. So it sounds like this is a really transformative experience for the students and for for you as Master Gardener volunteers who are involved, um, really taking those students through the whole process from preparing the site, growing the plants, to preparing yeah. them and eating them. Yes, absolutely. And we, we've heard wonderful stories from the students. A lot of these students have been exposed mostly through grandparents. Um, well, not a lot of students, but quite a few of them. Um, and recall grandparents 
gardening and growing their own food. So for some of them, some of them come from farming families. So they, they, they have an opportunity to remember and bring forward skill sets that uh, you know, are very applicable to this program and what they're doing. So that, that is also an advantage for all involved. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Denise, for sharing that. You're so um, welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So, and you guys are continuing to work with them. This will be an ongoing project. You'll we, we are. Uh, as of February, we will be starting our fourth year. And we do have some plans. Like I say, the grapevines are um, something that we're looking at. We, we had some challenges with the blueberry plants, but that's uh, being remedied. And we're going to continue to nurture that. We will probably look at adding um, some more vegetables. And we have more uh, master gardeners that are showing an interest in the program. So we're very excited. Excellent. Well, you're definitely making a, a difference in the lives of these young men. So thank you so much. We for the hope so, yes. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you, Charlotte. All right. Thank you, Denise, and everyone on your team. So our next group, everybody's name up there. Um, whoops, went too far. Our next group is also from Cabarrus County, and this is the community service uh, category. And um, I think Jerry Harris is going to be the main presenter for the group, but you can see there were a lot of people involved in this project, which was a booth at the county fair. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Jerry. Just tell me when you want me to move, move forward. Okay, hi. First of all, um, you can hear me okay? I would like to thank all of those in, that have been involved in the Search for Excellence program, and especially on our level, to Mitchell Hagler, for su who submitted our nomination. I am Jerry Harris, and I've been an Extension Master Garden in Cabarrus County in Concord for the past eight years. And all of those years and more, Extension Master Gardener volunteers have been a part of the Cabarrus County Fair. Um, we, they've had an educational booth that helps educate the public about horticultural topics. And the 20 people that are listed here on your slide um, either work to plan it, to take turns working the booth um, on a schedule that we have out, um, help set it up, and then, of course, take it down at the conclusion of this nine-day event that's usually held in September. And this particular year for this um, recognition is September of 2018. So all of those people worked at that time. Our next slide shows the group of people who worked on setting up that 2018 booth with the theme of digging in the dirt. Now our goal was to talk about soil and what it takes to have good soil in our gardens and landscapes. And we want to not only educate the adults in our area that have gardens already, but to encourage other people to consider it and to improve their soil, and also to make a difference with the next generation of young people who have an interest in digging in the dirt. Our next slide shows Renee Hedrick and I, who for the past two years have co-chaired this project under the guidance of our um, agent, Lauren Hill. Um, both of us have an interest in um, pollinators, of course, being good gardeners. And the timing was right for us in September to use both our monarchs and black swallowtail butterflies. And that's not a dirt kind of project, but um, it really did help to draw kids and adults alike to our booth because they wanted to see the butterflies and the chrysalis and the stages of the butterfly during those nine days. Um, so on the next slide, you see the chrysalis of the black swallowtails that we were showing kids as they, and word got around, did you see the butterflies, did you see, you know, and so people were coming over to our booth and that helped get them there. And while they were there, our next slide will show you the rest of the booth um, and so you can see um, that were located um, by the main entrance of the fair and we tried to make it as inviting as we can. Now we have over the years downsized our booth. So we used to have up to three different spaces and we made it a big, big production. One of the things that we learned over time as Master Garter, not just Renee and I, but um, the other executive committee and the people that were planning our booth was that um, we wanted to keep it 
smaller and simple and yet get our educational concepts out there to the people. Um, you see examples of uh, plants in the slide um, that we can talk about. Our backdrop was actually used for another um, previous year's topic, and that was banding of trees. And so if you look carefully on the backdrop, you can see little bands on the trees. At that particular year, we talked about aliens and how alien it is to have these worms come down. So we had to take the aliens out of the, out of the backdrop but leave the banding on so that we could still talk about banding of trees, even though that's not a soil concept, we could hope that people would recognize that. And we often leave that um, as one of the questions for our youth when they do our scavenger hunt. Um, on the table, you see obviously the butterfly um, section of it. And it was not just there, but to the right also, Charlotte, there's um, a little one with all the pictures. Um, on it, yep, we had that was the actually the swallowtail chrysalis there. But in between, our agent Lauren um, has given us a lot of materials that we want to share um, with the public, and hopefully, we'll catch people adults' eyes, especially as they come by. Um, and also, um, Lauren had a place that the people that if we could not answer their questions um, as master gardeners volunteers that we could take their contact information and Lauren would follow up with them as well. So that was an important thing that we wanted to do. On the right side of the booth, you see the little cart, um, the green cart, and um, that's the, it has youth gloves and trowels and marigolds and kids could actually help plant and we recycled them, we didn't you know, give them out um, because the lesson was not to just come get a free marigold. The lesson was, do you wanna have the experience of planting? So that's, and actually digging in the dirt to follow our theme. And then you can barely see it on the right side. I think we have another slide that'll show that better. There's actually a wheel that again, catches people's in, um, eye so that they can come in and actually have the fun of spinning a wheel and, um, getting them to start the scavenger hunt and show some interest in our booths. On the next slide, you see the back table that you couldn't really see very well um, from that last um, slide that you had. Um, we had samples of soil amendments, um, some of the little, uh, little identification pegs are not in all of them there because I think I took that before we got the last one as it was getting set up. But you can see that we had wanted people to be able to ask about the kinds of amendments, what does it look like, and hopefully generate some questions. Um, there was another table to the left that we actually had samples of the soil in our area so that people could see the the, the red clay, see the yellow clay and the difference in the kinds of clays that we have and some places that actually have other kinds of soil in our area. And then on the next slide, of course, we could not talk about soil without talking about and encouraging folks um, to learn more about soil sampling. Um, as this slide shows and encouraging people to do that, you know, know talking about their soil you know, what, what do you need to do to encourage people to get that soil sample so they're not guessing at how much they need to amend. Next, um, another Master Gardener volunteer shared um, her worm composting, and the kids especially were interested in this. Um, the scavenger hunt asked a question as um, the person that I try, I'm the one that tries to be, as a former educator, I um, try and work with somebody else in our master gardener group to come up with the questions that we ask kids. And we, we'd separated it out last year for um, two different age groups so that the younger kids had a different, very basic kind of questions that they were looking for. You know, can you find, you know, the butterfly, um, um, maybe just identifying names of things, um, you know, what might live in this box, for example, you know, it says worms love banana peels, maybe we ask that kind of question of some of the little kids, and they're, we encourage their parents to help them. So they don't always have to write out the answer, sometimes they just have to tell their parent that they 
understood that concept and and they can go on and and um, still get their prize even if they don't know how to write yet they can still understand the basic concept and the older kids had a little bit of harder quest questions um, they had to do a little bit more work you know sometimes it would take the kids um, five to ten even 15 minutes depending on how much they got into the into the questions um, so the scavenger hunt um, uh, is a good way to, for us to get both adults and kids to work together to learn about landscaping. Yeah, Next. and I could see how with a fair being such a family event, drawing the kids to your booth gets yeah. the parents over there too. And, so. and, and as Master Gardener, you have to work at it. You can't just sit behind your booth and let people come to you. You know, we're, we're kind of like the fair at the barker at the fair that says, come on in, come on in, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to do a scavenger hunt? We have a prize. Then we had people that think that they can just get a prize and come by our table and pick a prize. And we'd say, well, if you do the scavenger hunt, you get to have a prize. You know, so we were kind of strict about that. But you can go to the next slide, please. And there's a better look at the wheel. That wheel has been used for probably 10 or more years, and we try and adapt it. Um, we had to try and figure out how we're gonna use our wheel without having to redo it totally, because it's kind of um, uh, acrylic kind of um, encasement, a plastic um, front on it. So we can't always change, we have to tape the different kinds of things. So this year, we that year in 2018, we changed it so that we could talk to people about that your good soil is what helps you have great food. And so the wheel doesn't give them a prize. It, it says win a prize, but we have to explain to them now, if you go in and ask these questions that are on this little half sheet of paper and learn more about gardening, then you can, you'll can finish winning your prize. So it's kind of a little trickery that we get them there because they're interested in the wheel or the butterflies, but then do you have time to answer some of these questions and, and win that prize? So if you'll go on to the next slide, uh, there's just a close up again of the cart and it, hopefully kids when they had time and answered all their questions and won their prize, we hope that the kids wanted to, and some did, um, and some of them didn't have time because their parents, you know, are, were a society of moving on, and, and uh, some, some people couldn't take as much time, but some kids actually did go in and plant. They got into the dirt. They practiced planting, and over the course of the fair, we saw several hundred kids and probably even more adults because um, it's a fun opportunity. We, those of us that sign up for it, um, we, we have 15 shifts to cover um, just throughout those nine days, um, Saturdays and Sundays, of course. Um, we have three different shifts that have to fill the time slot, and we always try and have two master gardeners at a booth at a time working together so that the master gardeners and try and learn from each other. Even if we're experienced master gardeners, we're still learning. I'm a transplant from North Dakota, so I'm still learning from whoever I'm working with. And um, we try and pair new master gardener um, trainees and people that are new to our organization, working with a more experienced person if that's possible, so that they can learn from each other as well um, as we try and answer the public's questions. Do you have any questions? If you have a question, you're welcome to put it in the chat box or unmute your mic. Um, I just, I, I was, I really loved how you had the little digging implements in the soil amendments um, because people do, it just kind of, it really makes it really inviting. It's like, come and touch this and, yeah. and so see what this, this is like. Well, and they, they know about red clay, but they don't know what else, you know, what other kinds of soil is out there. And as there, you know, that there is a difference if you have red clay is better than yellow clay, you know, and talking about things like that and what they can do to find out what to do about it, that it really showed people why they should do a soil sample test. Mm -hmm. Anything that anybody else wants to add? Renee is here. I guess we're good. Okay, I don't see anything coming in with the chat. So this, uh, thank you so much.
Um, Jerry, for Thank sharing, um, y'all definitely made this a very engaging booth, you know, and the fact that you were always there at all hours of the fair, Master Gardener volunteers were there staffing it to really yeah. help people get engaged. Yeah, that's them. really important. We, yeah. we didn't want to just put our stuff out there and then they don't get the lesson that goes with it. Right? Okay. Oh, one question. So um, what was your um, theme this year? So this was from 2018. What y'all do this year in 2019? Jeez. We we tar we targeted trees this year. Lauren um, Hill said that one of her major um, quantity of questions that she gets as an agent is about trees in the area. So so we talked about trees and um, we had um, an, uh, a new project with one of our newest master gardeners that was encouraging to give trees out for Arbor Day so we could we could help him with that and. Um, talking about some of the different problems. And of course, our backdrop has a lot of trees there. So we um, went to a nursery and got samples of other trees that we could show people and talk about. So instead of just plants, um, this, this year we had a lot of trees in our booth. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jerry, for sharing your project and to your whole thank team you. for the great job you've done. Thank and you so much. Congratulations, guys, for yeah. winning, for receiving search for excellence yes yeah, thank you absolutely all right so next we move forward to the innovative project category which uh the master gardener volunteers in chatham county um were the recipient for this category with their newcomers project uh, which is a project they call helping your garden grow and we have sue flum who's going to tell us about this project so you're on with us sue yeah i am and thank all you right. And uh, I'm here with Kathy Moorhead as well, and we're both going to talk about uh, our, our project. Um, and I know a lot of you guys out there um, try to address newcomers' needs. I've seen it in um, last year's presentations and such. Um, Chatham County is growing like crazy, so we thought we would just take a, a real focus on newcomers alone um, and those people that are really new to gardening. Um, so really what we, we thought about was that the abundance of information on the NCS, not yet, Cheryl, I'll okay, tell you. Sorry. <laughs> um, we thought about the abundance of information that's available on, on all the NCSU portals and how overwhelming it is, um, even for a lot of us as we sit in plant clinic, it, it, there's a lot to sort through. So what we wanted to do is make it easier for somebody new to the area, you know, or kind of novices um, to find research-based information that they need in one place and then give them um, links to then spread out and, and go further to find out um, information about uh, topics that may be of particular interest to them. We really wanted to be an easy and welcoming way to introduce people to what Extension has to offer. And also, um, we wanted to make Chatham residents aware that there is an EMGV program here and that we are a resource. The program is only three years old in Chatham County. Um, and the third class has just completed the coursework. So, this is also about just getting out the information that we are here to help. Okay, now you can change the slide. Um, and in, in thinking about it, um, we, we have a definite need here. Um, the growth rate is um, projected to be amazing. And we're taking a proactive uh, approach to the population growth. It's growing much faster than most of the other areas in the state. Um, as you can see there, there's a picture of Chatham Park, which may or may not be of you know, any relevance to you, but uh, Pittsburgh is right now a town of 4,200. It's expected to grow to 60,000 just due to this one area that you see here as Chatham Park. Um, it's covering 7,000 acres. Uh, and there are other developments, of course, in progress. So this is a booming area, and we wanted to lay the foundation for future outreach efforts as well. Um, we are getting a lot of inquiries via the Ch Chatham County CES website, and those um, inquiries are increasing. Um, 
both via phone and website and through our um, plant clinic. So um, we took the kinds of questions we were getting and then said, how do we want to um, structure our information? And then what's most important to everyone? And it seemed like the areas to focus on were climate, soil, and just plant information, um, especially because a lot of people are coming from the north or coming from Texas and the kinds of plants that are growing here are just very different. And indeed, uh, our team was probably at least half people that have relocated here within the last five years. So we were also passionate about being able to say, well, I walked out in my yard and I had no clue. So we kept that in the back of our minds as we went along. Okay, you can change, thank you. Um, so what you see on this page are, are our two key um, information sharing vehicles. On the left, left we um, tried to create an easy to navigate, user-friendly website. Um, and we wanted to say, it's, it's a guide to helping your garden grow. Let's make this informal, let's make it approachable um, and inviting. Um, without getting too far into um, technicalities, but rather provide links to address those should somebody want them. Um, on the handout, we developed a two-sided handout that sits nicely in a display. And um, we did a pilot distribution on that, which had quite good pickup. Um, we found that the combination of um, minimized um, information, but telling people what they can expect to find, a couple of pictures to pique their interest, and also including a QR code so that they can just go right to that website and, um, and get the information that they're looking for. We also had a link to this new website on the Chatham County website, um, the, the official county website under their welcome to new residents. So again, another way to reach them. Um, our um, pilot of the handouts went to a couple of libraries, a local garden center. Um, the farmer's market had great pickup as well as the Ag Fest. Um, and so what we're going to look to do in the future is kind of expand these, uh, the most effective information sharing um, venues. All right, we can change. So this is our website organization, really pretty straightforward. Uh, we wanted to tell them about uh, the master gardeners. So again, expert gardening help. Um, give them some research-based gardening information, which um, then focused on soil and um, uh, some information on plants, some information on climate. Um, we did get the plant lists. We also have a garden center and nursery directory. So once the people say, oh, well, I could grow this. Well, now where do I get it? And also um, links to understand all the classes and workshops and youth programs that are available to help people orient themselves and learn more. Okay, the move. And then this is, um, the picture shows um, how we were promoting the website. This was actually taken at a um, garden center on their counter, had really good pickup. Um, as I said, there's, uh, we're expecting 60,000 new residences in the near future. Um, you know, it, it's expected to grow population by like 23% versus an average of 12% um, in the state. And um, Chatham is also in the top five counties for per capita in, um, increase in income. So we're thinking there's gonna be a lot of interest in landscaping and capital improvements. So again, driving interest in what do I do and how do I approach my garden and make it look lovely. Uh, once we got this uh, out, our website increased, um, our hits on our website increased significantly. Um, and uh, then we're in the future, uh, I have to say, our website, we think we want to ultimately move um, to the Chatham NCUS, NCSU website and get this whole thing almost invisibly 
behind that because it makes it so much easier to operate and get links that uh, cross-link. And then the next slide is what we learned. Um, and I think the first thing I, I would always say is good pro project management is always key to this. Um, everybody worked well together, but I think the, the first crucial step was really the planning phase and getting alignment to what do we want to say, what do we want to get out there, and what is the tone and feel of our communication. Um, so we, we had a working vision of welcome to zone seven in the, new, in the North Carolina Piedmont. So it was really just kind of, okay, here you are now, let's enjoy this and let's learn about it. Um, from that point on, the um, team split up um, and everybody kind of picked up on an area that they had interest or passion in, whether it was design of the website or researching a particular topic like climate and then putting it together. And what we found is that everybody on the team learned a heck of a lot from each other. Um, given that we're relatively new EMGBs, there's a lot to learn still. Um, so in sharing and reviewing what everybody found, um, we both learned, a lot, we all learned a lot, as well as um, we're able to share with the folks in the plant clinic. So I think there was a, a big outcome there. Um, we also gained some partnerships with our local garden centers so that we can um, be a referral site for them. Um, and our website is getting really good feedback. Um, so we think that we did a good job at getting kind of a one-stop source for information and we'll just move forward with feedback and optimize as we go forward. And that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you, Sue. I've dropped the link to the website in the chat box. So um, it's there. And we also have a summary document that's going to come out about the projects. And it just gives you a two page summary and links to resources, inclu including any web pages or um, videos that might be mentioned today. So that'll be sent out as a follow up to today's webinar. All right. Well, thank you, Sue and Kathy. I think uh, we need to time-wise move to our next group, but if you guys have you. questions you want to drop in the chat, we will maybe revisit them later in the webinar. This is, I, I should mention, uh, before my current position, I was an agent there in Chatham, and this project was just getting started, so it's so wonderful to see it come to, uh, to, to fruition, and the amazing yeah. job you guys have done. So, you, you. you got us off to a great start. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. <laughs> no, thank you. guys. Y'all did all the work, so thank you. All right, so this moves us on to our demonstration garden category. We have two gardens, uh, two, two recipients in this category. There's actually just a, a tie. I've got the same score. Um, so we have two recipients. We're going to start off with our Master Gardener volunteers in Caldwell County who are going to tell us about the Unity Park and Community Gardens demonstration beds. And for our Caldwell folks, we've got Ellen Roberts, I believe, is going to be leading the presentation. That's right. All right. Fantastic. So, hey, I'm Ellen Roberts, and I have Linda Campbell, David Horn, and uh, our agent who saw us through all of this, Ellie Snyder, with us today. And um, you can go to the next slide. So this is a picture of Unity Park and uh, Community Gardens, and I was going to ask David just to give us a little bit of information about Unity Park and, uh, you know, what we're trying to accomplish there. Thank you, Ellen. The Unity Park and Community Garden is the second actual community garden that we have in Caldwell County. The, it was started in 2009, so we're coming up on our 10th anniversary, and uh, it is on a five acre plot that is a city park and it was a collaboration between the hospital Caldwell Memorial and the city of Lenore. It includes uh, two areas for garden beds, about 75 individually rented and managed uh, beds for the community and another um, area of demonstration beds that are managed by the uh, master gardeners. And this shows the uh, demonstration garden bed behind the, the pollinators there. Uh, the park is a total of five acres and it was begun because of our concern in the community of the health status of our youth and uh, has continued to be a, a uh, response to 
uh, trying to improve the health by access to fresh food. Thank you, David. Uh, so um, you can go to the next slide, please. So this is a little bit about what we accomplished in 2018 and our focus. We wanted to use this great facility to help educate uh, the public about horticulture. And um, David and I actually took the community, took the Master Gardener class together in um, 2017. So that's how we met up. And uh, so from that, we pulled in some other master gardeners like Linda Campbell, and we really focused our energy on education in the community gardens. And so um, you can see we did a bunch of stuff. We had, a, we had 10 beds that we managed. We put in lots of volunteer hours. We had six public gardening classes, and we got seven classes started with Ellie. We had a seven class series with Ellie for the early Head Start families. And most, most fun, we got to work with the 4-H garden clubs. We got to bring in another group from the extension into the garden and uh, they had a great time and they were fun to work with. And we did some uh, videos on square foot gardening, which I'll tell you about a little bit later or in the next slide. And we produced a whole bunch of produce, uh, uh, much of which we donated. So we can go to the next slide. So here is our square foot garden. And this was an experiment that we used. Uh, it was the first time we had done square foot gardening in uh, Caldwell, in the, in the Unity Park area. And it seemed to be a real highlight of the, um, of, the, of, of the whole gardening that year. So we were able to use the square foot garden as a basis for several of our classes, including with the 4-H'ers. Uh, they had a great time helping us plant. And we actually planted three seasons worth of, of produce in those in that square foot garden. And uh, we had the city of Lenore came out and did, I think, four videos. So we were able to really utilize that square foot garden as a way to demonstrate that you could grow a lot of food in a small place. So uh, that's some pictures of that. So we can uh, go to the next slide. Maybe. Maybe. Did you see it? It's advanced yeah, to the... Um... Yeah, it did. So this is a... So the other thing we wanted to do, um, we have some beehives um, by one of our local uh, um, beekeepers, and we wanted to provide... Um, we wanted to provide a pollinator garden for those, bee, for those bees in the beehives. So we started a pollinator garden that year. And this was actually started by one of our interns, Josie. Uh, so that was pretty neat to see her come out and start a pollinator garden. And also uh, we actually had another experienced master gardener at the beginning working with her, but she unfortunately had to step aside for a little while. But uh, Josie took the opportunity and actually taught a pollinator class out at the community gardens um, last year. So um, I think you can go to the next slide. So this shows, we love to try growing unique crops. And uh, in 2018, we grew some ginger and turmeric, and this is a picture of that. And we had a class around ginger and turmeric, and we taught people about how to harvest it. And we also taught people about how to use it. And we, uh, I think we had like 25 people show up for that class. We passed the fresh baby ginger around. And if you've never smelled that fresh baby ginger, it's pretty awesome. We passed the turmeric around and told people to be careful not to get their hands stained because it will stain your hands. <laughs> uh, but we showed people a lot of ways to prepare and use these, this product and uh, talked about how to actually grow your own the next year. So uh, we had a lot of people take home some samples. So it was all in all a great class. And I think you can go to the next slide. This is another, um, so you can tell we like to prepare food. And this is another class that we had in 2018 about peppers and how to prepare peppers. And we had a variety of, of, of pepper uh, peppers. We showed how to dry them. Um, and we took this idea, this pepper class really was the catalyst 
were some ideas that we implemented in 2019, which we just, we had a couple of cookie one bounty classes, and that was primarily based on the success of this pepper class. So, uh, we grew a demonstration bed with all the different we, we pepper did. varieties. We, we had a about. demonstration bed, um, and Linda, Linda helped a bunch in this. Do you want to say anything about the pepper class, Linda? It was a, a wonderful experience, and we uh, had so many people that did not know about peppers or did not like peppers or that they would sample them, and then they liked them and wanted to grow and wanted to take some home. Right, and we made a hot sauce too, so that was fun. So we took the, so um, we sampled that. So um, anyway, we thought that was um, that was a great way to help to show how people could incorporate different kinds of foods into their diet. Yeah, and so. we also gave out information on. Uh, yeah kind of extension-based information on preserving yes. them. So we talked about different ways you could dry them or freeze them for storage. Right. And you can yeah. see a you can see a drying tray right there yeah. uh, that we used for a, for a dehydrator. So anything else on the peppers? All right, let's, next slide, please. I was just, did you guys work with the Family Consumer Science Agent? We did, that? thank That's you sorry. so much, yeah. we did. And we also worked with, I'm, go, I'm not gonna get the right <laughs> on how you pronounce it, but we wrote, worked with the EFNEP agent. Um, FNEP. <laughs> yeah, there you go. FNEP. So we did that. And so, you know, so what we really, what we really learned in 2018 that you really have to pay attention to maintenance and to watering. And we were able to, in 2019, create a better schedule so that we made sure we did every, you know, we got the watering done. We actually implemented a, a actually a two, uh, we had two work days or two work mornings a month. So we scheduled those. So we, we learned a whole lot about project management and garden management in 2018. And we were able to implement some of those things that, that we learned in 2019. We also learned that preparing for a class is a really great way to learn what you're talking about because you have to anticipate the questions and you you know get to to go through the in the North Carolina um, website and find out all kinds of great information on some of the products that we were growing and we learned how to use searchextension.org a whole lot mm -hmm. so if anybody doesn't know about searchextension.org I recommend you use it it is awesome we also learned that we could really use a teaching pavilion and we're working towards getting one of those hopefully we'll get a better um, teaching pavilion in the future and we learned that um, it really takes a village because it wasn't just the master gardeners that helped with all of this. It was also a lot of the regular community gardeners that were gardeners already out there. So um, any other lessons learned? I just think that it's important to know that by having a place like our garden, the master gardeners themselves have a regular place that they can count on getting their service hours or, or attending classes, getting the education they need. So it really provided some structure to the whole Master Gardener program to have this location and to see it used this way. The city uh, whose park it is and provided this space for us, um, they are absolutely thrilled with what it has meant to the building the sense of community yeah. because it really does. And I guess the, the other thing it really helped us do, as Master Gardeners, we always want to help out. And sometimes we forget that it's, we want to help, but our, our, our purpose is to help educate the public on um, horticulture and it really helped us drop that message to the master gardeners and that was really helpful because it was a great fun place to do that education and I think uh, does anyone have any questions I don't see anything coming in on the chat but uh if you do have a question, you can put it in the chat and we can loop back around to it. We did have one question that came in for the Chatham County group um, about the, the newcomers project to, to ask if you were engaging in social media or promoting the, the website through social media. I don't know if Sue is still with us. <laughs> She's on mute, so we'll 
we'll follow up on that question a little later. But I do want to say to Ellen and, and David and Linda, um, thank you so much for, for sharing this amazing project. Um, I am personally very passionate about gardens as a way to teach. Um, and, you know, they offer so many opportunities to partner across extension with youth programs with 4-H and with, you know, the way you guys are taking it all the way from seed to table, you know, to partner with Family Consumer Science and FNAP, um, you know, just to show that full range. You know, I, I, am, I am often guilty of growing things because I like to grow it, but I don't know what to do with it. And so it just sits there in the garden. <laughs> so it is wonderful to see you take it all the way through the whole, the whole cycle and um, that you've, you've added to your outreach with videos. And I did, I put the link of, for your videos in the chat box um, and you're having multiple classes and reaching out to, to many different audience. So just really taking full advantage of the resource you have there. So thank you for sharing that and for all the work you're doing. All right, so we are going to move forward to our next demonstration garden. Um, and actually, we just got a, an answer that came into the chat for the, ch the social media questions. So let me just answer that really quick. Um, you see David wrote back that Chatham County has not got their social media efforts in gear yet. Um, so they haven't yet done that, but maybe it sounds like something you're working towards. All right. Um, all right, so our next demonstration garden is our Master Runner volunteers in Wilson County, and they have the Wilson Botanical Gardens, which has been an ongoing project for many years, and the, pro the, the part of the garden they specifically submitted for Search for Excellence is a new garden, the STEM Garden, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and um, we are actually going to start this presentation with a video that has been produced to show you the garden and tell you about it. Here we go. Welcome to the Wilson Botanical Gardens STEM Garden, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. This garden was created by Master Gardeners, maintained by Master Gardeners, and also the Master Gardeners do our educational programs for middle school and high school youth. Each garden is divided by subject, so we start with science, you can see that our signs are interactive. They have a QR code that links to an NC State publication. So people can find more information about rain gardens and carnivorous plants. In this garden, we teach about our very cool native pitcher plants and Venus fly traps, about insect and plant interactions, about soil and erosion, and other things that bog gardens do, like reducing chemicals in our water supply. As we move to the technology garden, you will see we have a charging station, which is solar powered. There are lock boxes. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I must have hit something. It started over. Let me try to get back. Welcome to the Wilson Botanical Gardens STEM Garden. As we move to the, there are lock boxes so people can put their mobile device in the box, lock it, and then come back to a fully charged phone. Also in technology, we have a weather station. This weather station information can be found by going to Weather Underground and you can know what is happening weather-wise at the Wilson Botanical Gardens any day of the year. We have an event space. This is also a great place to set up additional tables for classrooms when we have high school and middle school students. And we are going towards the engineering garden. This garden is um, centered around wind power. We use the 4-H curriculum, Power of Wind, to talk about how wind move things, how they can power things, and also hydroponics. There's a small, small pool or pond. We sometimes have fish in there. 
and then we have lettuce growing we started this in rock wool in our greenhouse and then you can see the root system that goes down into the nutrient water we have a human sundial this is based on our latitude and longitude and if you'd like more information about how to design one for your own garden demonstration garden let us know so for this to work you stand on the month and if the Sun will stay out I might cast a shadow it's a little hard to see but it's around 12 o'clock daylight state savings time there's two rows of numbers to take that into effect and the last garden is the math garden which based on the Fibonacci spiral which is a mathematical principle and how lots of plants grow like sedums sunflowers and pine cones we can measure the plants and use geom um, geometry and we can also use math to calculate a tree height the last feature in the math garden is a backgammon table we have all the supplies in waterproof boxes and also instructions so we hope that you'll come and visit us at the Wilson Botanical Gardens and the STEM Garden. All right, excellent. Okay, that was Cindy Lauderdale who was narrating the video, telling us and walking us through the STEM Garden. Um, and now I think we have Judy. Um, yep. yep, Judy's going to be joining us to tell us just a little bit more, and we've got a few few additional pictures to to show of the garden. Hi, Charlotte. And if you can just scroll through the slides, um, I will just um, continue on with what we're talking about. Um, here in Wilson County, we're very rural and we have high poverty and unemployment rates. And while we have many companies in Wilson needing skilled labor for the most part, they have to hire outside of the county. So one thing we felt we could do to encourage students into a STEM field was to approach STEM from a gardening outside classroom experience. For programming, we have a master gardener for each area and students rotate through the station. And we need about two or three hours with students so they can participate in each station and they learn as they're going through this. And then we have surveys uh, that students have indicated that they're happy with this educational programming. And uh, we have plans to work with our local college here, Barton College, this summer with their STEM camp and integration uh, Im imagination station, which is a, also a learning place here in Wilson. It's a children's museum with their programs to integrate, integrate with ours. And what we learned from all of these uh, new areas in the STEM garden as our newest garden here at the um, Agricultural Center is that a lot of times we as students learn a lot more than the, uh, we as teachers learn a lot more than the students. And this is true with our, our volunteers here that maintain each of our gardens. Um, because we have, um, a smaller amount of uh, master gardeners. We only have two assigned master gardeners for all of these gardens. So our lessons are great as we are trying to figure out how each of these areas work. Uh, for instance, in the bog garden, um, that's such a rich environment of soil and we had to learn quickly um, how to control the weeds that grew in such a rich environment um, along with the pitcher plants and the uh, Venus flytraps. We also learned that um, our visitors were very interested in the carnivorous plants and would love to try to touch them all the time and see what they did, um, as opposed to waiting for an insect to fly along and um, be consumed by that Venus flytrap. In our um, 
uh, hydroponics area, that is um, a tightrope um, of learning the difference between keeping the pond clear and keeping the plants growing in our varied weather that we have here, the hot and then the, the water that comes down from the rain and keeping the algae out of the pond um, and keeping kids from throwing pebbles into the pond. <laughs> so we are always learning in those um, particular areas. Um, so we have a balancing act in those, um, in our Fibonacci spiral. Um, our learning lesson was how much water do we give um, these succulent plants that are growing outside that most of us are used to growing inside in a pot. So um, we are consistently learning every single day and we know that we still have more things to learn as we uh, continue to grow these particular gardens in our stem garden. Any questions? I think one thing um, you guys had some considerable funding to help with this garden. You had grants from several um, organizations and worked on a lot of fundraisers um, to make this possible, and yes. which is quite impressive. I think the, the total investment was around $100,000. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and included a couple of twenty-five thousand dollar grants that really helped you, right? Get right. that going, yeah. yeah. So, and and though the details, a little bit more information about those is going to be is included in the summary. Um, and I'm going to drop the link in to the video. And I think it's very fitting since this was a science, technology, engineering, and math garden that we you were able to present it with a video. I appreciate you <laughs> taking that extra effort to get the video made and share share the garden with us that way this morning. I guess if I could just add one more thing, we have had um, one high school teacher that's been very interested in the garden and she has helped us to develop curriculum to teach that lines up with the core values that they have to test on. Um, and she was very pleased with the outcome um, and that, that is kind of the thing. If you want the schools to come, you have to align it with their curriculum. So that's, a, that's something that we have learned um, through this process too. Yeah, that is an excellent point. Well, thank you both for, for sharing the garden with us this morning. Um, as I said, the, the summary will include more information. We've got the link to the video. Um, I encourage everybody to visit the Wilson Botanical Gardens because this is just one of several gardens there and uh, that Master Gardener volunteers play a, a key role in uh, creating and maintaining and using them to support educational programming. So we're going to move on. We've got, uh, we've still got our um, uh, category, a couple of categories left. Our workshop presentation category will be next and then we'll wrap up with our youth category. So we'll move forward. Oh, we got one more picture from the garden to our workshop and presentation category, which is the Master Gardener Volunteers with Watauga County. Um, and their project was an advanced landscape design class for Master Gardener Volunteers. So for, for, for these projects uh, like workshop and presentation, it doesn't necessarily have to be something for the public. It can be training um, that applies to Master Gardener Volunteers. And I believe we have Grace McEntee here with us to tell us about um, to tell us about this project. So welcome, Grace. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, we had a class, Advanced Landscape Design for Master Gardener Volunteers, and this class was created to address a fairly specific uh, issue. We have a lot of residents in Watauga County that have moved here from other parts of the state or the country. And they have never lived in perhaps a place as rural as this, or as mountainous as this, or with a climate like ours. And so they're unfamiliar with uh, plants that will thrive here, with uh, how to maintain gardens that are built, or yards that are built on slopes. Uh, they might not know the value of landscaping with native trees or, or native plants, or even which plants um, that are native are good for landscaping. And they maybe have never had to share a yard with wildlife like rabbits or squirrels or deer. So many of the questions that come into our extension agent are 
very, very, you know, our repeated questions about these topics. So our extension agent, Paige Patterson, has long dreamed of creating a core of Master Gardener volunteers who could help her in addressing these very common challenges. And towards this end, she has created a, this class to help grow this core of people who can help her. Uh, this class was taught with uh, the extension agent, Paige Patterson, and she recruited a recently retired landscape architect, Jane Frazee, to co-teach the class with her. She's also a master gardener. <laughs> and Jane Frazee, of course, is also a master gardener. That's true. Uh -huh. uh, and the class, if you'll move to the next slide, started with uh, big concepts, started with just lots and lots of information. We began with uh, key concepts in landscape design, function, scale, unity, simplicity, balance, focal points. Uh, this is a slide from one of the many PowerPoint presentations we had. The class was, would meet once a week for three hours over, over uh, four weeks. There were 21 participants, Master Gardener participants. Uh, so each of us got uh, 12 hours of training. Uh, from the big concepts, we went into more specific topics. For instance, as the next slide will show, uh, stabilizing slopes, a big, big issue in Watauga County. Managing water. Uh, we went on to talk about very specific solutions. The next slide will show one of those above ground solutions, dry creek beds, swells, building swells. Uh, we also talked about rain gardens. We talked about drainage issues. We talked about what to do with our runoff. So lots and lots of water issues went into this class. We also spent a lot of time, as the next slide will show, on using plants in landscaping. How to create plantings that involve a variety of plants, plants that will give variety in texture, in color, in form, in shape, will be uh, beds that provide interest all four seasons of the year. We talked about plants that do well here. We talked about all sorts of issues having to do with plants, with specific plants. And of course, we spent a lot of time talking about native plants. We are blessed with having so many native plants that are just gorgeous and that do really well in landscapes. Uh, some of these are familiar to people like the dogwood tree. A lot of them are much less familiar to people moving into our county. Um, many people don't um, know some of the local wildflowers that do really well in, in our garden beds like the turtle head. Um, our plants that are really, really great for pollinators like the uh, cone flowers or the asters are plants that will attract a variety of birds like the sardisberry tree. So we spent a lot of time talking about native plants. The second part of the class, however, was more experiential learning. We were able to, our instructors were able to recruit a volunteer local landowner who let us use her property as a testing ground for some of our ideas. This is a picture of the the house that and property that we uh, were able to go to. We spent a full uh, class day at this, air, at this home. As you can see, it's a pretty blank slate yard. This is the view from the backyard. The front yard is just as much of a blank slate as the backyard. We uh, had been co uh, coached in some of the information we would have to have from the client, you know, what uh, the family's desires for how they wanted to use the yard. We knew the family had uh, two young children. They also had two 
very, you know, they had two large, very energetic dogs that would have to be taken into consideration. So we had a lot of information going into the visit. Once we got there, as the next slide will show, we got a lot more information. This is a picture of our landscape architect instructor, Jen Frazee, who brought with her a lot of um, designs from her that she had created over her career. And this was a really good learning experience because her designs really helped to stimulate our imaginations and to make our ambitions for this yard much, much greater. Uh, we were told from the outset that we were to create our you know, dream proposals, that we didn't need to worry about budget, that this was just to give us experience with what the possibilities were. So seeing her, pro her uh, proposals really helped with that. We hadn't previously thought about things like oh, we could change the configuration of the driveway. We could add in outbuildings. We could put in hardscaping for an outdoor entertainment area. Um, so we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to think about stimulated by hearing a professional really coach us through some of her proposals. The next slide shows something a little more specific to this particular yard. This is a sketch of the house plan and you can see some of the uh, hard, some of the features of the property have been put in. A few of the trees, there is a, um, right up, sort of above her hand is a rock pile that the client has, has asked us not to get rid of. She was very fond of her, her pile of boulders, uh, but it's something that we could use as a landscape, a real landscape feature. Well, and everybody got a copy of. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so the next uh, slide shows a copy of the, of the plan of the yard. On the left side is a sketch drawn to scale by our landscape architect. She made a poster board size copy of this and gave one to each of us so that we could use it as we walked around the property and take notes. On the right is a sample that she gave us of what a site analysis might look like as you're walking the property, seeing some of the issues, noting things that you want to address in your proposal. So we spent a lot of time walking on the yard the having uh, our two instructors point out potential pointing out issues that would need definitely need to be addressed uh, the yard had for instance some real drainage issues it had um, a drop-off in the slope that needed to have something done to it uh, and then also just throwing out ideas about oh, you could do this or this or this or this or this in this place, or you could do this or this or this. Uh, so we then took that information and we went home. We had previously been taught how to draw to scale and our goal was to write, was to draw a two scale proposal for our client. Each of us drew our own proposals and our final class was a class where we invited the client to the class. Each of the proposals were briefly described with explanations about how they address the issues of the property and how they beautified it and how they would meet the family's needs. At the end of the class, each of the proposals was given to the client who went home to mull about them. Uh, this class we felt was a really big step forward in our big goal, which was to create master, master gardener volunteers who were knowledgeable and confident in their knowledge and had a little bit of a taste of experience in dealing with clients. Uh, we 
feel like there's still a lot of work to do. And towards that end, we have since then had a more specific class. And the plan is to have a series of much more specific classes, each dealing with one particular topic that will help us to become these kinds of volunteers who can really be a support group for, uh, for our uh, extension agent. Our class that has just finished is a class on plant identification. It focused largely on native plants and trees and shrubs particularly that, and many of these are excellent choices for landscaping. Uh, we also have plans to use our demonstration gardens to test the deer resistance of plants. As you many people know, many plants are are uh, said to be deer resistant, but at least the deers here find many of those plants fairly tasty. So we're interested in finding out which plants here that could be used in landscapes are actually, actually deer resistant. Uh, we are going to continue to think about classes that we want to offer that will help with this. And we're hoping that sometime in the near future we can actually began helping to take some of the phone calls and do some of the home visits that will help our residents who need um, help landscaping and growing and living in our very specific mountain environment. All right. Well, thank you, Grace. Do we have any questions? Uh, I reinforce what you say about the deer. They don't read the lists. <laughs> we create the list, but they don't read them to realize they don't like those plants, right? <laughs> so I, I, I had a quick question. So with the 12 hours included the time going to the, the home and looking yeah. there. So it was, it was classroom and on-site. Yes, that was one of our three-hour classes, although I think we actually spent more than three hours on that mm. visit. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, and it really reinforces, you know, the, this whole topic of landscape design and, and being able to support people in making decisions around their landscape. It's so much more, it's not just a one hour class, you know, it's a very, it's a huge topic and it takes um, a lot of different, you know, individual things contribute to the knowledge you need to be able to do that and, and that hands-on experience really reinforces it, so. Well, um, and so many property owners have uh, such a limited, idea about landscaping. So we really wanted to be able to get our homeowners to not just plant a little border around each of the four sides of the home, but to really think about using their entire yard as a palette. Exactly. Well, I am sure you got y'all learned so much through this process and yeah. um, you know we'll we'll use that both to in your own yard and then to support extension to help your neighbors so this is, this is truly I a, think I can safely say that we all immediately went to our own yards and started making adjustments <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're reinforcing your learning <laughs> and putting it into action all right well thank you so much Grace for for sharing with us this this amazing class this experience you guys had and how you're going to use it um, in Watauga County to help help citizens and support extensions education outreach. We are going to, to move on now to our, our final presentation for the day and um, this is for our youth outreach category and our Master Gardener volunteers in Buncombe County. Um, we have Nancy Good joining us and um, Allison Arnold who is the agent there in Buncombe to talk about their um, day camp, their garden week at the Dr. Wesley Grant Senior Recreation Center day camp. <laughs> so we'll turn it over to you guys to, to, to round us out. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, I'm here with Nancy Good and um, this was a five day camp um, each day. Master Gardeners uh, ran it for two hours each day. It was located in a low income area of Asheville. Um, we, they worked with 25 to 30 kids uh, throughout the week, uh, ranging in the ages from 8 to 12 years old. Uh, there were 12 Master Gardeners involved in all, providing uh, around 167 hours of volunteer time. Uh, they felt the major impact uh, of this project was certainly camp participants. 
uh, their families and the staff, um, all learning the importance of gardening and the various components of gardening, soils and composting. And um, Nancy will go into some of that um, as she talks about the projects. They worked with a 4-H curriculum that provided a lot of the resources and the activities that they used. Uh, really emphasized hands-on experiences um, that the campers took home with them and were able to uh, work with their families. Um, a lot of lessons were learned, um, certainly organizing young kids between eight and 12 and putting them into small groups and uh, keeping them focused. Um, but also knowing the subject that they were teaching inside and out, keeping up with the kids. Uh, certainly learning from each other, uh, how to organize the kids and have short structured times um, and those activities during those times to help keep them on task and focused. Um, and then of course the importance of keeping a sense of humor um, was, was really important. Um, so Nancy Good will share some of the projects that they put together and you can just Scroll through the slides. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So uh, we started out, it was the first week after school was out and these kids came from all over. So we had a spider web introduction game where you tossed a ball type of thing. Took the kids on insect safaris. They built, we had pre-made bird houses and let them paint them. They made bird feeders. They, we did a, a day on uh, soil and composting. We uh, had them plant seedlings early in the week. Uh, we did, these are the pine cone bird feeders. That's a job best done outside. Um, maybe the, high, the kids kept a nature notebook, everything that they learned. Um, that's a list of all the stuff that they did. We had many things that I didn't even mention. They pressed flowers, they painted rocks, they collected stuff outside. The, the highlight, I think, for most kids was the vermiculture class. We pre-drilled shoeboxes, painted them dark, um, and did a lesson on uh, vermiculture and worms that tied in with the soil and the composting. Um, the most important thing I told them is that all the worms were named Gary after a fellow master gardener who got me hooked on worms, and what to feed them, what not to feed them, how to keep them in a cool place, keep the soil damp, and why we value the worms, what they do to the soil. And they could see the soil that these worms had enriched versus some very red uh, clay that we brought in. And also, you know, that they were a live animal and that if you took them home and your mother didn't want them anywhere near the house, that you could release them in a garden or if you get tired of them, feeding them and stuff, you know, release them in a garden or the woods when fall came or whenever you got tired of them. We had so much fun. I'm not really sure that the kids had as much fun as we did, but they were really sweet and um, we had a lot of laughing and we learned so much. And, and uh, the secret to working with kids, we think, is small, smaller groups. And if they can be outside, it was a beautiful week. We had wonderful weather. Uh, we, had, we had them outside doing most of the stuff, so pounding rocks. And at the very end, they put out a little program. Uh, they had made gnome houses, so that's some of our gnomes. And they put a little song and dance number on us for them. So. Um, I, Charlotte, I just wanted to add something um, that this is, we've had a youth program in Buncombe County for quite some time, um, but just more recently we've become uh, sort of re-emerged with it and sort of looking at what are our opportunities. We have a school grants program, but reaching out to these audiences um, is kind of hard in the Asheville area where it's quite urban and um, sometimes hard to reach some of the communities that we would like to reach. This was in response to the um, Senior Center, I mean, uh, the Wesley Grant Center, Southside Center, um, their coordinator reached to, to me, um, to the agent asking for programming. And so the Master Gardeners put this together in that response. And um, we've done it two years in a row. Yeah. 
and and hopefully we'll continue to do that. So it's been a it's been a really good way to uh, reach a community that's otherwise hard to do that with. The first, I was say, the first year we had two planning uh, pre planning um, meetings with maybe a core group of five or six master gardeners, and um, we had threw out all sorts of ideas, voted on what we thought the kids would enjoy the most and then divvied them up into individuals and then we went ahead and recruited other master gardeners who had the time or inclination to come and help us and it was a lot of fun yeah it looks it looks amazing it looks like a lot of fun and i think this project like many of our search for excellence projects really reinforces the power of partnerships. So you don't have to do everything yourself. There are other organizations in your community who maybe already have the contacts with the audience you're looking for, um, you know, in this case with the, the kids. And so you can bring your specialty, your knowledge and expertise to, you know, what they're already contributing and together, you know, make the experience so much more. Um, as well, I think you mentioned you, you use some 4-H curriculum. Yes. Um, so, so pulling from these other areas in extension, you know, the, the consumer horticulture master gardener, but we also have all the curriculum available through 4-H for youth. We, we mentioned also working with family consumer science to, to talk about using uh, plants and, and produce. Um, so this, this was, looks like a, a, a great experience for everybody. Um, and I'm sure created a, a very memorable experience for the kids. Um, and their parents who got to learn by everything they were taking home through the through the camp each day. We uh, have two specific uh, 4-H programs, Soil Solutions and Agriculture. Agriculture. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Those are, yeah, those are available online. Um, I will try to get the link and put it in the chat box before we sign off today, but so I want to thank you, say thank you, Nancy, and thank you, um, Allison, for, for sharing your project. Thank you to all of our um, recipients this year, and, and just a an, uh, big congratulations once again um, for the work you're doing, and um, and for and thank you for being here and sharing uh, that with us today. And just as a close out, I want to let everybody know that we will be holding Search for Excellence in 2020. And we want to see even more applications. We want to see more applications from all across the state. Um, we are going to be holding a Q&A session. This will be something new we haven't done before in January just to uh, get everybody together who might be thinking about applying and just answer your questions directly and kind of give you a little more guidance on the process. Um, and that's when the call for applications will initially go out. And again, this is looking for those group projects where there's learning. Um, either by Master Gardener volunteers or the public, and we will be sticking with our categories that are part of International Master Gardener Search for Excellence. Um, the applications will actually be due in mid-March, so if you're planning ahead and thinking about the time frame, you'll have time in January, February, um, early part of March to get those applications ready, get them submitted. You can right now go online and see the 2019 application. We don't anticipate major changes to the 2020 application, um, but we don't quite have that posted yet. Um, we're, we're hoping to see if there's anything a little different with the, the next International Master Gardener Search for Excellence that we might uh, need to make any adjustments, but don't anticipate anything. So you could go ahead even now and look at the 2019 application and use that as a guide if you wanted to go ahead and start thinking about maybe drafting some um, the application for 2020. It is on NCSU Garden on the statewide site. Um, you can just search, enter, put search for excellence in the search bar and it should get you there. Um, we will for 2020 be announcing our recipients by April 30th and we'll hold this type of celebration webinar in July. So um, a, a little bit uh, earlier in the year, of course this year we were able to celebrate our recipients at the Extension Master Gardener College in June and then follow up with this webinar to, so you could really share your projects with everybody. We will have the awards still, the $200 per category, and those are the funding that's coming through, through the North Carolina Extension Master Gardener Volunteer Endowment. And so I encourage you to consider uh, making a gift to the endowment. It does support the Extension Master Gardener Program all across North Carolina. And your donation goes into the endowment itself, so it's there forever, generating interest forever into the future to support the program. So it really is a, a um, 
gift that continues in perpetuity. Another way you can support the endowment is to purchase a Master Gardener Volunteer License Plate. Um, it is a $20 annual fee and $10 of that goes to the endowment. So half of that fee goes to the endowment. Of course, that's on top of the normal fees you have for license plates. So it's a $20 additional fee for your license plates and registration. And to learn more about the 2020 Master Gardener um, Search for Excellence and other statewide Master Gardener program um, efforts and events and opportunities, I encourage you, if you're not already, subscribe to our email list to subscribe. It is a moderated list, so um, you know you won't get hit with a bunch of unnecessary messages. It'll be, it'll be information about the statewide program that's relevant to you. And that is, um, that is our presentation for today. So we thank everybody who has joined in to learn about these wonderful projects. We thank, again, our presenters. I'm not seeing any unresolved questions in the chat list, but if anybody did want to enter a question or, or unmute your mic and share a question, I'd be happy to, to, to answer that. Um, but otherwise, I am going to stop the recording and just say thank you again to everybody and hope you're, you're all out there somewhere nice and warm and um, looking forward to staying inside where somewhere where it's nice and warm for the next few days.